When it comes to 3D printing, then I love to showcase budget-friendly 3D printers in my videos. The only problem with such low-cost printers is that they do work decently, but not always good enough, which can in my case lead to a lot of frustration. That is why I've been recently looking through lists with the best 3D printers, to find out that many people seem to favor the original Prusa i3 Mark II, which in its kit form comes with a reasonable price. But while looking at their product lineup, I noticed that they recently released a new Prusa i3 version, which offers tons of improvements. So I reached out to them for a review unit, and a couple of weeks later I received it in this huge package. And in this video I will show you my experiences I had with the machine, what special features the Mark III offers, and finally whether I think it is worth the price tag. Let's get started. After opening the package I found a bag of gummy bears, a list with all past tests of my printer, a t-shirt, an introduction letter which was also a packaging list and the 3D printing handbook, about which I will talk in more detail later. And while opening up the sides of the package I found two more smaller boxes, which contained a spool of grey PLA filament and a bunch of accessories, like a USB cable, a power cable, a spool holder, glue stick, tools, an SD card and an alcohol pad with an acupuncture needle. The last thing to do for the unboxing was to lift out the Prusa i3 Mark III, which as you can see is the assembled version, but there also exists a kit version with a noticeable price drop. And after removing the zip ties and a bit of cardboard, we can already see the first special feature of the printer, its removable build platform which due to its flexibility makes it a breeze to remove finished prints. Combine that with the magnetic heat bed and you got yourself a feature that due to its convenience will hopefully be a standard for future 3D printers. But nevertheless I continued by powering up the printer and connecting it to a computer through the included USB cable. Next I downloaded the driver software and the newest Mark III firmware from the Prusa 3D website, installed all of it and updated the 3D printer to its newest firmware version. Afterwards the printer did a small self calibration and it was ready for printing. So I added the spool holder to the frame, slid on the included PLA filament, preheated the machine to PLA temperatures and simply inserted the filament, which brings me to the second mentionable feature the optical filament sensor. Not only is it useful to automatically load new filaments, but it also pauses the current print when the machine is running out of filament and continues when new one is loaded. That is a pretty handy feature for large prints, but then again the sensor is not perfect. For example when you got a clocked hard end, the sensor usually notices that too late and thus the print cannot be saved. But anyway, as a first test I went with the included battering test file. Before each print the printer will execute its mesh bed leveling procedure, in order to guarantee a level print. Then it does a wipe outside the print area and ultimately starts the actual print. Now the printing process is pretty much what you would expect from every 3D printer, except for in my opinion the best improvement of the Mark III. To get an understanding for this feature, here is how a typical 3D printer sounds like during printing. And here is how the Mark III sounds like. Not convinced yet? Well, let's change over to stealth modes and listen again. The Mark III is quieter than other 3D printers, because it utilizes the TMC2130 stepper motor drivers which obviously offer quiet movements. But not only that, they also enable crash detection and recovery if the print head runs into something during a print. And they also eliminate the need for mechanical end stops. Moving on, once the battering print was complete, I popped it off the print bed and inspected its quality, which was decent. 
But what 3D printer review would be complete without the Benji test print? So that is what I tried next. And after 2 hours of printing, the boat was complete and except for a couple of spots, also looked very nice. Last but not least, I printed a whistle, which was also included on the SD card and then moved on to the two included slicer programs. The first one is more beginner friendly, which means you can only adjust a couple of settings and will most likely not mess up if you use one of the predetermined materials. If you're like me though and want to use exotic filaments, you have to use the second piece of software, so that you can fine tune the printing parameters of your machine. All in all, both programs work fine, but I noticed a small slicing problem with a couple of models, where parts just went missing. What I did then was repairing the STL files with NetFab, which up until now always solved the problem. And with the slicing power achieved, I tried out smaller PLA prints as well as a very large PLA print that took around 10 hours. In both cases, the printer did its job reliably without any problems at all. And I think the results of the prints pretty much speak for themselves. And after I tried out PLA in a few different colors, which as you would expect, did not decrease the printing quality at all, I wanted to print with other materials. First off, black ABS, out of which I printed a normal sized and an oversized pair of bolts and nuts, which opposed no challenge for the printer. Next, white PETG, out of which the printer created another bolt and nut pair, as well as a more challenging and bigger USB SD card holder. In both cases, the quality has its up and downs for which the reason was probably the missing fine tuning of the parameters from my side. As the second to last filament, I tried out Filoflex, which obviously is a flexible filament. And as you can see, it started out promising, but after only 5 minutes of printing, the hot end was clocked. So I removed the flexible filament, flushed the hot end with some PLA and tried the printing once again, but this time way slower with only 20% speed. This way the Filaflex printed without any problems, but due to my impatience, I later increased the speed to 33%, which luckily also worked flawlessly. The only problem with such a flexible filament is that it is not easy to remove from the build platform and can also lead to damages of it, if you're not careful. But nevertheless, the result may have been a bit stringy, but not too shabby at all. For the last material test, I tried out wood filament, for which I was also too lazy to fine tune the parameters, which resulted in two clocked hot ends. That showcases well that such a printer is not magical and still requires fine tuning. And it also brings me to the importance of the 3D printing handbook. There, pretty much everything you have to look out for before, during and after print is very well explained like cleaning the steel sheet surface with isopropanol before every print or how to clean a nozzle with an acupuncture needle, which solved my clogging problem. Along with the Prusa forum, you can find pretty much answers to every problem, which brings me to the conclusion of this review. Do I think the printer is worth its price tag? Yes, definitely. With its combination of useful new features, which were actually too many to fit them all in this review, along with the reliability and quality of the prints that make the Mark II so popular, this is a 3D printer that especially as a kit form offers a great price performance ratio. The only thing that I would nitpick is its look. Now while the metal frame along with the 3D printed parts does offer enough stability, I'm generally not a fan of Cartesian style 3D printers. But of course that is completely subjective. I hope you enjoyed watching this review. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.